You're listening to Hello Huddersfield, the voices of Huddersfield inspiring the future vision. Hello and thank you for listening to Hello Huddersfield. Today for our podcast we have with us Reverend Rachel Firth of Huddersfield Parish Church of St Peter's who will share with us her visions for Huddersfield Town Centre in the near future and beyond. To get involved with this or future podcast, please feel free to email us at inquiries at huddersfieldbid.co.uk. Co-hosting the show with myself, Sophie, we have bid manager Matthew Chapman, who will join the discussion throughout. Hi, Matthew, how are you today? Hello, Sophie, I'm really well, thank you. And Rachel, hello, and thank you for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm okay, thank you. I'm working from home and two senior school kids um, homeschooling, so I think just try not to climb the walls like most people at the moment. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about what you do and your relationship to Huddersfield. Sure. Um, I'm the vicar of Huddersfield. Um, I work at the big church by the park, between the Park House Arcade and the old post office depot. Um, I think everyone's got an idea of what a vicar does, people of all faiths and none. Um, some of that's to do with the vicar of Dibley, um, or Midsummer Murders, or Postman Pat, but I don't actually do, I don't, I don't murder people, I'm not as funny as Don French, and that, that vicar in Postman Pat was always just ringing bells and arranging hymn books, and <laughs> that doesn't come under my job description at all. So um, my actual job is leading a Christian community in the middle of Huddersfield, but because we're the Church of England, we have a very particular relationship with the community around us so I'm not just there for people who turn up church on Sunday morning the C of E is there for everybody so um, technically I'm a vicar for anybody who wants me to be a vicar really just like any vicar in any parish we're there to help anybody who thinks they need it to think about God. You're reasonably new in post if that's the if that's the right term to use um, and I know one of the uh, in, in your early days, if you like, I think we were maybe even in the first lockdown then, you, you couldn't even get into the church. But I know that you contacted us as the bid and you, and you were really, really keen to obviously get involved with the, the business community and the businesses in Huddersfield as well. Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know if you know, but every, every inch of England is part of the Church of England parish. And when somebody like me starts a new job, um, the words that are said about are about being there for everybody. So it just so happens that my patch is the town centre. So we're as much there for the people who are running shops and businesses there as we are for any residential population that we have. And the people who are coming into town and experiencing town, people who are visiting Huddersfield as tourists and visiting our heritage and stuff like that. So, so the church is actually connected to, to everything we do as a town centre. And, and you're right, Matt, my, I started this job. Um, I was, I was licensed the week that lockdown started. So I've had no normal time at all in this job. But I am local. People can probably tell if they're listening. I'm, only, I'm from Murfield originally. Um, I went to uni in Huddersfield. Um, and my last parish was up in Lindley which was, you know, 18,000 people of the population of Huddersfield, but just a different bit of it. So I've moved from like, you know, so much, I should say mostly residential, which is what people imagine, um, and uh, to a town centre. All right, thank you for sharing that. What is your favourite memory of your time in Huddersfield? Uh, do you know, Sophie, that's a tough one, because as you've gathered, there are a lot of them. You know, if, if I was new to Huddersfield for this job, it would be a complete, you know, I'd be, I'd be pulling things out of the last 12 months of, you know, and, and there have been, there have been some amazing moments, you know, in the last 12 months. Um, filming for Remembrance Sunday with the council and representatives of different faiths and veterans organisations across Huddersfield, even though we were, we were in a lockdown, that, that was an amazing thing to do, it's, you know, sense of people coming together. But my memories of Huddersfield, oh, um, Tour de France coming past the end of my street, finishing a Sunday morning service and walking down to the end of the street with a chin and tonic to watch the Tour de France go by. Well, well just amazing. Um, 
the, the reindeer parades and the scarecrow festivals in Lindley when the whole community were out on the street. Um, the food festival in town is one of my absolute favourites. Um, you know, the way St George's Square feels when it's full of people and the sun shining at the food festival is just absolutely glorious. But I, I could take you right back to... Um, to being a small child in a car on Leeds Road as the fans came out of the old Leeds Road Stadium, bouncing my mum's car as they chanted football anthems. <laughs> that was both terrifying and fun all at the same time. Um, and and I, I thought about this, you know, when you invited me to come on, one of my earliest memories of Huddersfield is we used to have massive blocks of starlings over the town when I was a kid. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, everything was covered in bird poop. It was horrible, you know, which is why we have the nets over the buildings now. But at, at dusk, that you know that you, you can find the pictures on the internet, can't you, of amazing um, flocks of starlings swirling in the air. And as a child, that was one of my, thing, the things I associated with Huddersfield, those beautiful sunsets and watching the birds over the buildings. It was just amazing, so... More memories than time to share them in, to be honest. Rachel, what, what do you think um, is uh, Huddersfield's unique selling point or what needs to be Huddersfield's unique selling point? Gosh. Do you know, um, when I was a kid, and I was, I am so, oh gosh, I am totally rocking that middle-aged lady. Things were different when I was young. <laughs> but... If you lived in this part of West Yorkshire, there was only one place you were going. If you were going out shopping, if you were going, you know, and it was Huddersfield. You weren't getting in the car and going to Dewsbury or Halifax. Good grief, Halifax might as well have been on a different planet when I was a kid. You wouldn't think it was only 15 minutes away from Murfield. It was off over there with a bunch of hills around it, you know. Um, <laughs> yet people came to Huddersfield and they came because Huddersfield was alive and thriving, um, which the university contributed to, which the fact that Huddersfield was properly diverse before anywhere else I knew in West Yorkshire felt diverse, Huddersfield did in a positive way. And I think we've still got that. I think we're at a point in our history where things have been really hard and, you know, there was a financial crash and, and the world has changed and on, move, businesses have moved online. And we get all that, but actually our diversity and the way we have always embraced it and celebrated it has not changed. You know, we're a town that's made up of villages that all have their own identity, but who, who identify together as, as, a, as a diverse place. As a, you know, people care about community here, that it feels like being part of community. Um, so that's one part of it for me. And actually, I think another part, last, last Saturday, we're locked down. My husband and I go out for our walk. And we don't want to go into the woods because, frankly, I'm sick of splashing about in mud <laughs> now. Um, well, it's the only kind of exercise we can get. So let's just walk into town and get a coffee. And, I mean, you'll know this, Sophie. There are more listed buildings in Huddersfield than yeah. virtually anywhere. I don't know whether it's per square mile. I can't remember the exact statistics but there are buildings going to rack and ruin that are covered in the most astonishing complicated victorian carving mm. and some of it looks as fresh as if it was done yesterday and you can be walking through the center of huddersfield and lift your eyes up you know it's raining and it's gray and there's hardly anybody about because of lockdown but you lift your eyes up and there's arcades and these busts like they're on the front of 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 ships and you know it's absolutely beautiful. And my husband and I said to each other, if this was France, there'd be an underground car park under the marketplace that they dug out 40 years ago so that everybody could drive right into the town centre and come and sit in the middle of all this. We, you know, and so our, something about grasping our heritage for the future and keeping on celebrating our diversity, I think, are the things that make Huddersfield what, what, it, what it is and what it can be. 
a really uh, they're super, Rachel. Thank you. They're they're really really good. And I think the just quickly to kind of follow follow on from there, I, I think um, the the bids included um, in a I think it's a consortia is probably the the, the right word to use. Um, and the, there's a, a heritage action zone that's just been, if you like, declared or set for for a certain area. It's kind of around St George's Square around uh, Byram Arcade, down John William Street, um, and, and just kind of that side of town to, to start with. But I think it's, it's naturally, I think it's only natural that it'll, it'll extend throughout the town too. Um, and that there's uh, there's all kinds of funding and initiatives to, to get involved there. And um, so I think it's it's in the very, very early days, uh, but I think hopefully that will be a start of, of, like you just mentioned there, celebrating the the uniqueness of the town centre of course, we aren't here today pretending everything is all sugar-coated and perfect. What do you think the challenges are for the town centre? Hmm. It's difficult, isn't it? Because some of those challenges are beyond our control. You know, we didn't ask for a financial crash that we that the nation still hasn't recovered from. We didn't ask for COVID. Um, and the astonishing challenges that that's brought. Um, but, you know... Things, things are moving and things will change. I, I think for me, maybe it's a little bit personal, but one of the things that we do in this part of the world is we have got a terrible habit of doing ourselves down, a really, really bad habit of, of telling a negative story about ourselves. And you know, it's a very West Yorkshire thing to do. And I'm from I'm from here, so I think it's all right for me to say it. You know, it's a very oh well. Oh well, it's things aren't what they used to be, and it's oh and oh and how are we going to get past this, and how are the council going to do that? We're very self-critical and critical of the town, and maybe when we were flourishing, it's a natural flip side, isn't it, of, of actually to the Yorkshire personality. Let's not get above ourselves. You know, everything's going very well, but let's not get above ourselves. But now things aren't going so well. I think maybe we need to start telling ourselves a new story. Because um, when we tell ourselves a new story, it helps us to see past the barriers and the challenges. Um, you know, it helps us to get to the place where there is vision and hope. So, um, and that might be some really small things. I've been talking to my churches about this um, because I, I also have a job of looking after all the other parishes in the Huddersfield area. And we work together. Um, and sometimes somebody comes along with a fabulous new initiative and says, oh, we should all be doing this and we should all be doing that. And we go, oh, do you know what I mean? It's just, just something else. And I talked to my colleagues and said, well, maybe, maybe it's that starting too big. What are the little things that are really working well on your patch? What, what really works for the community that you're working with? And let's be happy about that. Let's tell each other those stories and, and build from there. You know, and I think it's a whole town, maybe. Uh, we've still got a lot going for us, even with the empty shops, even with all we've got to get through after, after COVID, we still have an astonishing amount going for us. And yeah, let's hear some stories about that and share those with each other. Yeah, that, that that's super, Rachel. And I think it, it kind of, it reminds me of a conversation and another a, a podcast that maybe before or after this one that we've we had a conversation with Johnny Slow. It was, it was a director from the, uh, well, the, the, the parish pub and the arcade coffee and food and arcade beers. Uh, and he, he was saying a very similar thing on on kind of let's have, let's have the confidence in what, what we're good at and, and what we can celebrate. Um, and it, it, it's really interesting that you, that you mentioned that kind of, that you're, and I'm, I'm a very, very proud Yorkshire man, but it's very interesting that, that you, you mentioned that kind of, that Yorkshire mindset. But it, it, in a way, that in, in that mindset, there's also a really strong kind of grit and determination in there as well. And it's kind of, we're kind of, we're kind of like stubborn old mules where sometimes we probably need to be told we can't do something and then we'll probably do it. So, so if somebody came to us, you know, from another region and told us that our town was this, that and the other, we'd probably then, go and prove them wrong and show them why it's not like that. Um, wow. and it, but it is really interesting because um, one of Huddersfield Bid's key aims is, a, a, is for 
for Huddersfield to be a safe and attractive place to be. And a small element of the attractive um, objective is to go above and beyond um, the council's baseline cleansing um, delivery. So we, so Kirkley's council don't remove chewing gum. Um, they don't jet wash the streets with, with hot steam machines. So throughout 2020, we, we did that. Um, and just, just this week, we put a reminder on social media on um, how, you know, how far we delivered and the before and after pictures and what a difference it made. Um, and social media is not always a good um, sense of, of, of people's opinion. But, but on there, um, some people assumed that it was something we were doing right now, which it, it wasn't. It was just a reminder of what we were done in 2020. But the comments were, uh, oh, what's the point in doing that? No, nobody's going to be in town to, to, to appreciate it and nobody's going to be in the town. But if you flip it around, if we were doing it now, be well, when the time is right to reopen, what a sparkling, glistening, really attractive town centre we will have to all to come back into. And, and you're right, so sometimes we, we probably all need to just kind of reverse our mindsets a little bit maybe and to, to a more positive one than, than negative. Somebody once said to me, uh, a very wise lady once said to me, that when people complain, it's to do with, we're articulating something really deep inside us. It's not, you know, it's not just whinging. It's because we don't have the words to say, you know, things don't feel right. Things really don't feel, and it comes out in all kinds of, in all kinds of, and actually, you know, through the pandemic, that ha, 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 that's just been exacerbated, hasn't it? Yeah. But, you know, and because because it has been hard, and and you know it's been incredibly hard, um, and yeah, people's sense of isolation, people losing the jobs, people not knowing where the business is going to be tomorrow. Um, so yeah, um, you know what I say about positivity. I I, I it's not a question of of brushing under the carpet. The things that have gone wrong at all or the things that are difficult because they really are difficult um but um but perhaps yeah maybe it's just the jobs of folks like you and me yeah <laughs> to be yeah. the ones that go you're right it's a bit rubbish but have you seen this here you know <laughs> maybe yeah. that's just you know whatever it is you see what you're really out to do a nice thing here yeah Would you like to come and have a coffee over here you know but one of the um, it was it's really interesting that you mentioned that because yesterday I was on a um, a call with the the 3M Buckley um, organisation and they got a guest speaker of uh, well Sir George Buckley um, and that that organisation is delivering a new um, initiative or project where there's um, I'm probably going to use the wrong words here but it, it, it's on leadership so there's lots of courses that they're going to start delivering to produce the best leaders, if you like, in, in the country through through differing courses. Um, and one of the statements that was said yesterday was, uh, as a leader, things aren't always going to be diff uh, easy and they are, you are going to have to have some difficult conversations uh, and it's not always plain sailing. Uh, and, and what Sir George Buckley said was that the best captains weren't made um, in calm waters. They were, all, they were always made in, in stormy seas. And, and I, it kind of sat with me and I kind of thought, yeah, he's right, actually. It, the times like now, people people do or don't kind of kind of stand up for what, what's right and, and what's wrong. And, and now is the time to, to, to produce the kind of leaders, whether it be a leader of an organisation, a leader of a town centre, a, a, really, a leader of a community group. Um, and, 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 it, and it does need people to stand up and, and kind of lead and, and bring people along with them on the, on whatever journey it is. So we've now come to the end of Hello at Pottersfield and thank you, Rachel, for being with us today on the show. Um, we've had some interesting discussions today um, and I hope you listeners have enjoyed listening to us. Now, listeners, if you have any questions or have something you would like to share, you get in touch at inquiries at huddersfieldbid.co.uk. Keep a look out for our next podcast for another guest speaker. You're listening to Hello, Huddersfield. The voices of Huddersfield inspiring the future vision.